What's up everybody, Jingle12 here, back again with another video, and today we're doing something pretty good. We're doing a good video today. You've clicked because you don't know what tower to buy. You need to know what you need to purchase, what things you need to do uh, to get good towers and beat difficult waves in cube defense. I'm gonna show you some of these towers that really I would suggest buying because they are really useful. And we're gonna start off from the beginning. We're gonna start low level and we're gonna build up from there and I'm gonna compare towers and let you know what's better for the price that they cost. So hopefully this does help you out quite a lot. If you would, please consider subscribing. You don't have to, it's your choice, not mine. However, brings a lot of helpfulness to me. Helpfulness, is that even a word? It helps me out a lot and it helps you find more content similar to this much easier. So please consider doing that. All right, now that we've gone through the little bit of an intro, let's actually look at the tower shop here. So we see a lot of towers, not all towers in the game, but a lot of towers in, are located in here. Most towers that you will obtain are located here. If you're lucky, you may manage to obtain the Trial of Zervuzo Towers or an Event Tower. However, these are probably the most common towers you will find. They are all located here, and these are the only towers I will be talking about today. Right off the bat, you're going to see, again, we see a, two some massive towers right on the front. And honestly, while these may look very appealing, you're not going to be able to buy these for quite a while if you are a low level player, like some of you may be. So right off the bat, we're just going to go ahead and leave that behind. We'll get to this at the very end, and we're going to talk more about this area here where it all starts. Now, we also have this little shelf here. We've got some spike traps and some walls, and we'll get to that too. So you should automatically get both of these towers whenever you first join the game. This should happen. So from there, you're going to go on ahead. You're going to go play a game. You're going to go play some easy mode, and hopefully you get somewhere and get some money, some gold, maybe a little experience. And maybe you manage to get to level one, and you, maybe you play two rounds. At that point, I would suggest right off the bat, as soon as possible, buying Bubble Tower. Bubble Tower is a great tower uh, for the level. It does a ton of damage at its level, has good range. It is a really good tower, definitely worth buying right off the bat. I'm not joking, guys. It is a great tower to use as a lower level player. It really does some damage and is a respectable tower. Now, Bubble Tower is probably going to carry you a lot farther than Plasma Tower and Light Turret are. I believe you may be able to defeat Easy Mode with a Bubble Tower by itself. I cannot guarantee that, though. I haven't tried, but I think it's probably possible. If you know what you're doing, you could probably, with these three towers alone, Alone, be easy mode quite easily sea battery is useful if you need to place all stuff on water uh, my tower here I've designed this tower actually if you need to place stuff on water this is a good tower for you however there aren't a lot of easy mode maps where there is a lot of water so I honestly if I must be honest sadly this really isn't that great of a tower to use unless you have very specific circumstances so for you low level players, I wouldn't worry too much about getting the C battery. <laughs> Unless you just love me that much. I mean, hey, if you buy the sea battery just for me, thanks. Yeah, go, you know what? You know what? No, no. Sea battery is worth it. Buy, buy sea battery. Don't don't listen to what anybody says. Sea battery is the best tower in the game. In all honesty, uh, once you get to level three, you probably want to purchase campfire. Campfire is really good because it helps out your towers. You can probably skip sea battery and go right to campfire. Campfire is going to be a lot more helpful as it's a great support tower and will give you shadow sight on some towers that may not originally have shadow sight. Definitely worth using and it also discounts the price of towers and it also increases the range of towers and as a bonus effect it also heals your uh, HP so if you've lost HP due to cubes and you get this thing I believe to level 4 it will increase your HP over time. Glue gun can be a helpful tower at level 4 it is probably the next tower you'll be able to purchase once you reach this level um, I would not suggest buying it right off the bat. You're going to need that money later, but it is a moderately good tower and it will help you defend against cubes that are moving relatively quickly as it will slow them down and give you more time to kill those cubes. However, again, I wouldn't worry about getting this right off the bat. It isn't that necessary. Now, bucket, you just have to buy. It doesn't matter how, how, how broke you are. Bucket is an amazing tower. It doesn't have any intention. I mean, the, the description says it all, but and honestly, guys, if, if you just want a cool tower, get the bucket. It, it really is a great tower. If you want me to be real with you, you, you do also want to skip bucket and go to factory. Go ahead and purchase factory. Factory is going to be amazing for you. Amazing. I'm not kidding. 
Factory is going to help you so much whenever it comes to making money, as whenever you place it, it'll regularly produce income for you to use. Not just wave cash, not just ta cube damage, it's going to be regularly, repeatedly giving you money. Very good tower to purchase as soon as you are able to. Mount of Flamethrower is a respectable tower, however, I'm going to, in my personal opinion, I feel like you need to skip this tower. I'd say uh, save your money again. Mounted Flamethrower is good. It does do some damage. However, it's not going to do the amount of damage you want it to you want to see for this level and cost. You probably can go ahead and skip Mounted Flamethrower. It's res again respectable, but it's probably not going to do what you want. Go ahead, move on, get yourself the Heavy Turret. Heavy Turret does a lot of damage. It's got a high range. It's probably the first tower that's like this that you're going to be able to purchase. I would suggest buying this tower. It's definitely going to help you out in many aspects. Definitely a good tower to use. If you feel like you need some higher damage, higher range tower, this is the tower for you. It's going to give you a lot more range and damage that you will need. And you have a high uh, limit of placement with 40, so you're really going to be able to get them out there. Uh, next tower, and this one's definitely one you should buy. Shocker is incredibly important for your defense. Shocker is an amazing tower that does damage to every cube in its range no matter how many cubes there are it will deal the exact same amount of damage to all of those cubes so it is an amazing tower when it comes to a spam of cubes it is a really really good tower i'm not lying whenever i say you should purchase this tower because it's going to help you a ton whenever it comes to defending on the map definitely purchase this tower even if you if you feel like you need to save for this over the heavy turret go ahead and save for shocker over heavy turret because shocker is going to be much more valuable to you than probably every other tower you've seen so far except for maybe factory factory may be a bit more helpful here now defabricator is a good tower as it removes items and gives you more space however at this level you really don't need that much space so you can probably skip this for a little while gold mine is very expensive and I would not expect you to buy this one right off the bat either. However, if you do decide to, it will help you get gold a lot faster as it gives you gold every round that you survive. And the higher the level, the more gold it will give. Definitely a good tower if you need to get some gold, which again, I, hope, I assume most of you probably do. But just be careful not to waste all your time saving up for this whenever you may need something more like mortar where you can survive for longer and get more gold that way. Again, mortar is a great tower. It does explosion damage. It takes out leads it takes out shadows it is good it does a lot of damage i won't say it's overpowered but it is pretty powerful and it's definitely respectable as it's uh, for its level i would definitely suggest purchasing this tower as it has a good range and can see most cubes wrapped you can probably skip it's just allowing you to place towers that are um, usually land towers on water uh, you can probably skip missile launcher missile launcher is respectable however it isn't as good as i'd like to see it to be purchased so you can probably skip missile launcher the next tower though is going to be a game changer for you mounted minigun is going to be a game changer this tower fires incredibly fast and does a ton of damage has a good moderate range can see shadows it, it is it's really just a great tower for you to own i definitely suggest that you purchase this tower pretty quickly once you become able to buy it as it's it's, it's really going to make your life a whole heck of a lot easier i'm not joking whenever i say that mountain minigun is a great tower for spam especially and just in general mountain minigun is a great tower Battleship is your first really kind of good, powerful water tower that you can use. Kind of like a replacement for mounted minigun almost. You can go ahead and skip it though. You're not going to be using it as much and go on ahead. And if you feel like it and you have the money to do so, Submarine is a good tower to purchase. It can have like map covering range. It can hit the whole entire map at, I think, believe level three or level four. It has a massive range once you hit, I believe, level three. And it's really good if you need to deal with cubes that manage to slip past most of your rest of your defenses. Definitely a good and respectful tower that does a little bit of splash damage and is just able to target pretty much any cube on the map. Now, Plantation. Honestly, I would not suggest purchasing this for a good while as it is pretty much not necessary for you as hopefully some of your friends at least will already own it. Uh, if you feel like you need to purchase this tower, go ahead. However, it is expensive and it really just isn't necessary for you probably at the moment. If you don't know what it does, it just rewards every player on the map with a certain amount of cash every a certain amount of seconds. As for level one, it's 80 cash every 20 seconds. 
the so this tower is good for giving everyone some cash and can be pretty powerful however i would not uh, suggest buying this right off the bat i would go ahead and leave that behind the only time you'll probably be seeing this one be used is whenever you are in a gameplay with some of your friends that have higher levels and more gold than you now we can also talk about railgun railgun again is a good tower and you could bar purchase this tower however i would probably skip that as well and go on ahead to rail minigun rail minigun is also going to be very helpful for you as it is very similar to the minigun however it does more damage at a slightly reduced fire rate and is generally also just a very good tower compared to mountain minigun it's like the next level of the mountain minigun i definitely suggest purchasing this tower it is really really good for dealing higher levels of damage now past this you could purchase star star is probably an optional thing it's a lot more expensive than rail minigun it does a good good amount of damage but it's just not for the cost and the uh, necess necessity of it it just really doesn't pull off what you'd like to see from its pricing again a good tower but i i wouldn't suggest buying i wouldn't make it a priority of purchasing i would probably at this point go back and maybe buy a couple of towers like defabricator for example if you haven't bought in purchase gold mine go back and buy some other towers you haven't gotten yet glue gun you know some of that stuff i wouldn't worry so much about the star as i would about going back and grabbing some other things you have missed and don't be worried if you miss something like if you just decide to completely ignore missile launcher like go ahead and completely ignore missile launcher i do believe i skipped anti-cube defense to like the very end i believe anti-cube defense was like the last tower i ever purchased don't worry so much about that if you miss something so once once we get past this we're now on to the center tables here and we can see our first tower is anti-cube defense this tower is really good actually almost every single one of the, no i take that back every single one of these towers here is really really good and most pro players use these towers pretty regularly but i'm gonna be honest with you if you're level 18 here i would suggest skipping uh, level 19's tower of the anti-cube defense and going right to level 20's tower of the oil rig oil rig once again is going to change your life in this game it is going to make money so much easier for you it rewards cash every single round and so whenever you place this tower and a round ends you're going to get so much more money than you used to I guarantee to you, Oil Rig is going to change everything. I highly suggest getting Oil Rig as soon as possible, as it is an amazing economy tower that's going to help you a ton with income. And it actually costs less than the uh, Star of Zorvuzo does over here. So again, if you want to skip Star of Zorvuzo to get yourself Oil Rig, do that. I, get, I highly suggest buying Oil Rig. Now the next tower, which I would consider a good replacement for Rail Minigun and or Minigun, would be the Stealth Bomber. Stealth Bomber is an explosive tower it, it isn't like rail minigun or minigun as it drops bombs instead of constantly shoots at cubes however it is a massive splash range and a really good splash damage and a massive range in general actually it is a really good tower to defend against all types of cubes as it can hit both metal and shadow sight at level one it really is a good tower i would definitely suggest purchasing this as soon as possible however i will note that it does cost a lot of gold so do know you're gonna have to save some cash for that which is why i would suggest by this point having gold mine you're probably going to want to have gold mine by this point to begin saving for stuff like stealth bomber and these next two towers i'm gonna go over because the prices get a lot more expensive the next towers that again that are in the list are orbital satellite and sun temple hopefully you're also managing to be start to beat hard mode that is good you're gonna need the cash you're getting from hard mode to purchase some of this stuff orbital satellite is a respectable tower it does a lot of splash damage so it's gonna deal a damage to a lot of cubes uh, so you'll be doing a splash damage of at level 160 to a wide range of cubes on the map so that is why it is powerful uh, I honestly would almost suggest skipping this if possible uh, so, and instead saving up for whenever you get level 25 and purchase Sun Temple. Sun Temple once again is going to be life changing for you as suddenly you're going to have access to incredible power. You are going to have great great damage once you purchase sun temple sun temple is great whenever it comes to dealing damage to any cube whatsoever except for one specific type which uh if you do not know is called a sun cube sun temple 
cannot hit any type of sun cube. However, other than that, sun temple is very, very, very powerful. Does a ton of damage, and as you can see down here, it will sacrifice all towers in its range in an attempt to max out its damage at 125 damage every, I believe, 0.1 seconds. It is makes it a really, really, really powerful tower, and it's going to help you a ton in defending against hard mode and chaos mode, actually. So definitely, definitely would suggest saving over orbital satellite and getting Sun Temple. I would suggest at this point skipping orbital satellite once again and going for Poseidon's Tomb. Poseidon's Tomb is going to also be very valuable. It is a water tower. However, it is a very powerful water tower. It can't match up with Sun Temple's damage. However, it is a really good tower to use as an earlier game tower for defense as it does a lot of damage and does some splash damage. It is really a good tower to use. It does have a weakness with lightning cubes as it does heal them instead, uh, so you do have to be careful with that. However, it is a really good tower for damage in early game, and I would definitely suggest having this along with a couple of other towers placed at the beginning of the chaos and hard mode. So again, Poseidon's Tomb, a good tower to use at the beginning, especially if you have it coupled with something like the Stealth Bomber, it's going to be very helpful to you. Now there's one more tower we haven't talked about, and this is the Sun Temple MK2. Now honestly, I'm not really worried about this tower so much as to explain to you, as you're probably by this point already going to be able to purchase it once you hit level 50. It is expensive. However, level 50, by the time you reach level 50, you should be able to obtain that much gold. I don't believe you're going to have trouble buying this tower once you manage to reach the level of it. And if you are low, I mean, just, just save up. Come in preparation. Prepare for the time whenever you're able to buy it at level 50. And level 50 is a pretty high level. If you manage to hit level 50, you, you, you're up there. You're going to be a respectable player. These are actually useful towers as they will deal damage to cubes on the path you can get, take normal spike trap or if you want to spend a little money you can purchase the golden spike trap and be able to uh, deal damage against cubes that manage to get past you i will also say there's I, my my naming of towers may not be agreed upon all this is again a personal opinion it does not mean that it is the best as again i'm not the best player in the game uh, some of you guys say i am i i don't i'm not don't don't tell me that hopefully this advice helped you but that is the video for today, guys. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I apologize for not having a video out in a while. I had a math exam that I had to take this past weekend, and so I was studying for it all week, and it left me very busy, so I was unable to get a video out. However, hopefully I'm back. Hopefully we're gonna have some fun. Hopefully we're gonna be talking about Cube a lot more, and maybe some other games too, you never know. But guys, thank you everyone so much for watching. Have a good day. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.